Welcome to the Art of Relationshiping. So by popular demand, um, I am going to guide all of you through an exercise. We're going to do a deep dive. And the result of this exercise is actually going to give you um, very real information on what are your red flags in relationships. So what would be considered an absolute deal breaker? And we're also going to talk about what are the green lights. And these are actually equal, if not more important, because oftentimes people focus on, you know, what's wrong in a relationship and, it, and people are quick to say, dump that, leave them, get out while you still can. But it's also really important to know what the green lights are and to see where the law of attraction is pulling you together so that you can make a real assessment. So when there are yellow lights, and especially at the beginning of a relationship, it's important to do this, um, is to really set the groundwork for what's important to you, what you would like to invite into your life. And also, what are the boundaries of things that you are not willing to tolerate? Um, so with that, I'm going to pull up some of my notes here so I know I get all my big top, hot topics. Um, but what I want to talk about first is the crucial components of combat compatibility. Um, so let me just ask all of you, what do you think? And I'm just, we'll pick the top five. So what are the top five values you think that you should connect up to be super compatible? Honesty. Honesty is a good one. Authenticity. Authenticity. Humor. Humor. To me, common values, you know, yeah. how, how you look at the world. How you look at the world. I was about to say family and money. Yeah. Family money. And money. Right over. Right. You're yeah. absolutely right. Um, okay. So I think that each of you have come up with some really important ones, particularly customized to what is top, what are on the top priority list for you. Um, the top five values to connect up that we want to make sure are in alignment for compatibility include family. And in the family category, it could be where, I mean, all of these relate to where you're at in your relationship cycle, not simply from chemistry to casual to committed, which is a subset, but in the grand scheme of your life. What developmental phase are you at in your life? Where are you focusing your energy and where do you want that energy reflected to you? Are you an individual? Are you looking to partner up just to have compatibility and companionship? Are you looking to partner up to build a family? If you've already got a family, are you looking to expand that or are you looking to um, if it's launched, just really think of the developmental phase that you're in. Are you looking for a partner to move through the rest of your life with? Are you looking for someone to just have fun with? So do you want somebody who um, experiences family as related by blood and there's going to be holiday dinners together? There's going to be you know, the next one's faith. So, you know, you'll have ceremony and tradition together. Um, do you want to have kids? Do you not want to have kids? Do you want family members in your life or do you really just want this one-on-one -on -one time? So when you consider lining up family as one of the top priorities, realize that it's not just the person that you're compatible with, but it's their whole circle of relationships that is opened up to you. And you may want a large circle, you may want a small circle, just being aware of what that other person brings to the table, their, you know, this magnitude of people that could be an extended family, either related by blood or related by love. Um, faith is this, faith is top on the list also, because if you have a similar uh, sense of spirituality and guidance, it often will lead to the way that you make choices in your life, in your decisions, 
in your traditions and in your ceremonies. Fitness is top on the list also. And it's often because we will make choices based on our physicality. I would equate intellectual fitness as well as physical fitness, spiritual fitness, I guess would be another way to look at it. So if one person's, you know, wanting to get out and be moving all the time and the other person is actually happier to be reading a book, we want to make sure that there's enough intersection in that compatibility to, to be together. Um, finances, as Alex was saying, how do you budget? And I would say, how do you budget your time as well as your money and resources how do you budget your focus on how you spend your day? How do you use resources? And also your profession has an impact on your compatibility because we have judgments that go along with that. It's also, you, uh, you wanna make sure you're in alignment that you know for communication, trust and respect that you admire this person's um, profession in such a way that they make an impact in the world and it's the, really the choices of, do you live to work or do you work to live? So those would be the big five components of compatibility. Of course, as we talk about our core values are individual to us and we wanna align those together. So um, then there's the core mission and core values that we would consider. And we talk about this when we're talking about dating strategies. And we talk about this when we know our core values and then we set the, um, the same exercise and see which core values are in alignment or it consistent with ours. They don't have to be exactly the same. And the core mission is where you're going and your core values will tell you why you're going there. And your life lines up as an example of your values because you live based on your value system. So the nice to have are things that you have common interests and experiences so that you can, oftentimes this is how people meet, but the must haves are the common values because they pave the common path to walk together. Now, there are those times when we say opposites attract. So this is when personality types have, may have the same values, but they have different, um, they're expressed in different ways. Overall, there are three aspects to attraction, the pull, the call, and the draw. And what's happening in this ultimately is that this is, again, it's the law of attraction. It's what is catching your attention. And when you're first in that chemistry phase, it could be that there's mystery, meaning there's something we don't know. Like there's enough there that's like, hmm, it's piquing your curiosity. If something's a little or someone is a little unfamiliar, but you're, you're intrigued to become engaged, then that's that je ne sais quoi that is like arousal that it's really like getting your emotions going like a roller coaster ride or a, an exciting movie a haunted house uh, an action adventure when something profound when you share a profound experience with someone it gets your emotions going and your body responds to that and it's like oh, this is something new and it's a very bonding experience. So you've got this novelty. Now you could connect with someone and it could be novel for like two years. And then what happens is you get into a routine but there's no mystery, there's no danger, there's no, you're not sharing these uh, unique and new experiences together. So when those things happen, I'm always encouraging reignite the spark by going to a new restaurant, going dancing, having, you know, sharing a new location or a new approach to something together. Then there's mystery. Mystery increases the engagement because we don't know what to expect. 
So that's where I was saying it increases your curiosity and you want to lean in and you want to discover more. Um, and then there's arousal. So novelty, mystery, and arousal are the things that keep passion sparking. And again, it could be something as simple as an exciting movie, a new food, anything that you're sharing is a new experience together. So when, when we're uh, looking for compatibility, another thing that we're gonna look for is temperament. Yeah. Um, and again, you're looking for this arousal, this, you know, whatever novelty and mystery. And we were talking about opposites attract. And this is how people get involved in like, oh, I only want somebody good looking because that physicality is intriguing um, or I want a bad boy. But in reality, you know, that might be exciting for some limited amount of time. And uh, one of my colleagues says, use your loin as a thermometer, not a GPS. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought you'd appreciate that. So you want that pull, that dry, draw, that arousal, but let that be an indicator of something, not the destination and the only place that you're going to when you're looking for enduring love that lasts. Okay, with temperament, and I've been doing a little bit of study on this because this is the energy set point that you share with a partner. And when you're looking for that, really what you're sensing is the frequency. And we could do a deep dive on another day on that about what really determines your frequency and someone else's, that energy level, the vibration that you're sharing, that you're putting out there, and how do you adjust to that? How do you keep it in the positive? But you do want to get a sense that you're on the same wavelength with someone and that you're meeting each other. Otherwise, you know, one person could be like always the energized one and the other is drawing the energy. So just like battery positive and negative, you want to make sure that there's a balance there and that the language choices you share are comfortable and you're not feeling overpowered or dominating in a relationship so much, unless that is specifically what you're going for. And there's plenty of partners who are actually looking for that. Um, but again, it's making sure that the energy and frequency is what you're seeking. Um, there's another thing to consider, and that is potential versus capacity. And let's talk about that for a moment. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. There's a reason for all of it. I'm setting the stage. The potential in a partner is something that they, they could rise to this occasion. And depending on where you're at in your developmental stages of life, potential could be enough. Capacity is essentially saying this is what you're already capable of. And again, when you're at an earlier stage in life and there's more to develop and grow, you could be growing together, then potential is probably what you're looking for. And it's as you mature and you're more established in the world, then potential becomes the icing, whereas capacity is the cake. You know, so you need to know what your needs are to understand what someone is capable of right now. What do they need? What do you need? What can they actually bring to the table? What can you actually bring to the table? So it's more than just what you think you can do. It's what you know, you demonstrably know you bring to the relationship. And with that, you want to make sure that it's hazard free. There are no deal breakers. And we're going to talk about deal breakers in a moment. I know that we've, as a group and I, as I'm coaching with you, each of you have a unique set of what would be a red flag, what would be a deal breaker. It's important to be able to say no to the wrong people. And it's not insulting to them to say no to the wrong people. It's a gift because you're freeing them up to find the right compatible match and it frees you up to find the right compatible match. 
you can be graceful about it. Um, but saying no is actually the right thing to do. You can't take everyone on. Um, and then once you've cleared the way, it helps to clear the playing field so that the obvious matches that are more potential in the right direction are the right people. And it's easier to say yes to the right people because you know exactly what you're looking for. So to that, your relationship with your internal voice is relevant here because if you at any point are feeling like you are not enough, you don't deserve to be loved and you're not lovable, then you will self-sabotage the relationship. You'll do it every time. So if that's the case, connect with me one-on-one -on -one, because let's clear that block because you are enough and you are lovable and you do deserve love and someone is looking for exactly you. So knowing that is really the first step to actually being open to being relationship ready and engaging in a healthy relationship. So the mindset here is if you think relationships should be a struggle, then you're going to make sure that you get into a relationship that is require struggle. If you need to prove yourself or you don't deserve it, then it's like these beliefs will get in the way and make it very difficult for you to move things forward. Um, and it's important also to remember that you deserve to get your needs met. And if you can do that, your wants are inevitable. Um, but the things that we often say we want are like a six pack or somebody with a lot of money. Um, and you actually don't need that so much when you know exactly what is most important to you. So I think I was just doing something recently and we were having a, an interview and I'm like, you don't need to be rich to be in a healthy, loving relationship. You don't need to wait until you get a promotion. Uh, you don't need to have a fancy car. You don't need to have, you know, you don't need to wait until you lose weight or have a six pack or whatever. There's the right person for you exactly as you are truly. So with that, let's talk about how to find this right match for you. So what I'd like you to do, and I know I've asked you all to bring pencil and paper or some way to document is Pick, okay, good job. Pick five people or pets or connections or relationships that you've had, five profound relationships or people who are in your inner circle and put those on your list. This is current right now. It could be any time at all. I want five very impactful relationships. Okay. Um, the way that I did it on my spreadsheet, in case I was going to show you mine, once we do it all, I'm going to walk you through step by step, or this exercise can be overwhelming. So I'm just going to take you through gracefully. Um, so I wrote in mine, people I naturally have around me. And this, you know, I've done it before with you know, my late husband can be on the list, even though he's not around physically anymore. I use him as an example. Um, my kids are naturally around me. So you can have like someone you were married to, your parents, you're related by love people, who's in your inner circle. This is an exercise for you. So choose five most impactful people who you've had a relationship with. And give us plenty of space. <clears throat> Okay. Do we have them? I think we have them. Okay. Next step. Next to each of those people, 
I'd like you to put the primary positive traits that those people have. So in one case, in one of my people, um, positive traits, imaginative, logical mind, empath, compassion, highly sensitive. But for you, it could be hot bod, uh, you know, we intellectual shows up, whatever these positive traits are, that's what we're looking for. And you can put as many or as few as you like, but get those lists and see if you can at least give me five. One for each. So we're, I'm looking for five positive traits for each of these people. Therefore you should, well, I know, I just asked you for 25 words. <laughs> That's why I said, I'm going to walk you through. Okay. <laughs> positive traits. You're, you have words at your command. You're the queen. I'm of having, them. I'm having trouble with like. My children are <laughs> impactful, but positive words. <laughs> Can you just throw out a bunch of positive words? Cause I'm feeling the same. Okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you my whole, I'm going to give you my 25 words. Imaginative, logical mind, empath, compassion, highly sensitive, pragmatic, capable, leader, reliable, communicator, trustworthy, patient, thoughtful, fun and funny, sociable, wise leader, intelligent, decisive, I lost my place, sociable, intelligent, wise leader, talented, accountability, responsibility, communicator, decisive, logical mind, steadfast, another wise leader, capable. Though, I mean, those are, it could be good cook, could be great in bed, could be, um, you know, uh, I feel good when I'm around this person, could be, makes me feel like I made a difference in the world, so it could be reflective, um, could be, you know, we share the same political values, we share faith together, uh, we play tennis together, um, makes me feel safe, patient, Engaged, self-aware, open, compassionate, secure, confident, socially comfortable. I'm just giving you my words. Generous. Generous is a good one. I had a client who the physicality was so important to him that he um, he didn't want to, he was having a long distance relationship and he really wanted um, to be like so physically beautiful to this woman before he met her in person. And his description was he wanted his rear end to be better looking than George Clooney's face. And I'm oh. like, <laughs> <laughs> never, 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 never. <coughs> Growing up. I'm like, wow, I'm just thinking that there's every woman in the world doesn't require that. <laughs> I, I don't want to see his ass for the first year. <laughs> You'll never see his ass. Why? Just, I know. I'm like, wow, that's a high bar.
Okay, how are we doing? It seems all, all of mine have the same qualities. Well, isn't that interesting? So yeah. keep yeah. going. Here's what we're doing. We're giving you proof that you attract these amazing qualities into your life. So uh, here's demonstrable proof that these qualities exist and that you attract them to you. This is very good. Very good, Lisa. You, you get night. Okay, the next category, you've got your five people and each of your five relationships have five positive traits. What I'd like you to do now is give each of those people five negative things, the things you enjoy the least about them. This would be the, you know, could be the opposite, but. For the, for the same five people? The same five people. We're using these five core people. Mm. So um, to help you, I'll share my list. Fear of social interaction, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of abandonment, anxiety, imposter syndrome, inconsistent, closed off, won't play if won't win, delegates and manages up won't offer to engage, negative self-talk, limited capacity, follower, rigid, never enough, judgmental, unforgiving, gossipy, rigid, doesn't listen, doesn't like to try new things, stuck in their ways, their way is always right, I should change, they will not. You can add bully and opinionated. Okay, bully and opinionated are on your list. So those are the things that we're looking for. These are the, the things you enjoy the least. I think someone said earlier, dishonest, untrustworthy. Uh, I put inconsistent. Um, doesn't make good financial choices. Doesn't make good professional choices. So these, would, you could go to your, you know, the five, top five, you know, things that have to do with family, things that have to do with faith, things that have to do with finance, things that have to do with, wait, I just forgot them, uh, budget, finances, budget, faith, family, did I miss them? Fitness and family, faith, fitness, finance, and profession. Demanding. Could be demanding. And then let me know when we're getting the majority of those. Think who else. Say again. I'm trying to think who else I could use. <laughs> Sweet pixel. So now you've got your five relationships, your five people. Each of those have five positive traits that you enjoy about these people and up to, you know, five or so negative things that you enjoyed the least, like things that were just ugh, about these people. Now, Take the list. We're only going to look at the list of the primary negative things that you enjoyed the least. So if it was bullying or 
I can't remember the other thing that you were saying, Weasel. Opinionated. Um, what? Opinionated. Opinionated. So if you had bullying or opinionated on your list of things you enjoyed the least, how do you turn that liability into an asset? What would be the opposite of bullying to you? Are we supposed to write those words down too? Mm-hmm. The opposite of, of what we're putting in here? So the opposite of that negative thing. So now we're looking for the positive opposite. Um, the opposite of bullying might be someone who's supportive, non-judgmental, who's encouraging, who's inspiring. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, my short-term memory is like nothing today. What was the other one that you just said? Opinionated. Opinionated, thank you. Um, yeah. So someone who's super opinionated would be non-judgmental. That would be the opposite, the positive opposite. And I can keep throwing examples. Someone who's fearful of social interaction would then be socially comfortable. Fear, fear of success or failure, confident in their ability to achieve success or willing to fail in order to succeed. Fear of abandonment, a secure attachment style. Imposter syndrome, uh, self-aware and willing to step up 75% of the way, even if they're only 75% of the way. Inconsistent, consistent, closed off, open. Uh, won't play if they won't win, enjoys the journey and the game. Delegates and manages up, could be a team player. So we're looking for the asset that would be the positive opposite of this liability, this negative thing you enjoyed the least about this relationship. Rigid, flexible, follower, leader, limited capacity, unlimited, negative self-talk, positive self-talk, uh, judgmental, accepting. But not good at decisions. Um, then decisive. <laughs> 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 stubborn what's the opposite of stubborn um open to new ideas or flexible what's the opposite of angry calm joyful calm peaceful peaceful content content mm, yeah zen life <laughs> she likes that doesn't like to try new things adventurous doesn't listen active listener rigid flexible gossipy not superficial uh, judgmental accepting I should change they will not considerate of other perspective stuck in their ways their way is right open to the other ways of doing things doesn't like to try new things adventurous You've got a pretty good list going here. <clears throat> um, okay. Now, what I'd like you to do next, there are four, five categories that these lists could be considered. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> how pixel feels about the exercise <laughs> what's really funny is izzy is making the same sound at this end and i was muted and i was wondering if they were communicating with one another. <laughs> those two are in sync they play well together <coughs> all right so what i'd like to know now and you can put this atop you know, on the top of your page, these words, mental, spiritual, physical, emo emotional. I knew that was coming. Yeah, or material. Okay. 
Mental, physical, spiritual. Emotional material. Emotional material. I'm like, phys I have physical twice. <laughs> All right, well, we know what's important. That's what we're trying to figure out. <laughs> <coughs> okay, mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, and material. Now, what I'd like you to do is pick, what we want to do is you now have, uh, let's see, 75 words. What I'd like you to do is try to figure out which of those words are mental. So like for me, imaginative, logical, empath, consistent, pragmatic, those to me feel like mental intellectual words. So if you've got, you know, this is kind of a new category or you can do it as a new page even. If you've got across the top of your page, mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, and material. You, yeah, go ahead, Leslie. You, go, you continue, because I'm, you continue. Okay. I, I, you might answer my question. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out of all those positive traits, the negative traits and the positive opposite of the negatives, where do they fit? And I think it's probably, it might be helpful if I show you on my screen what mine looks like. Uh, do I have a question. Yeah about material because this I don't want to I mean I don't want to confuse this with yogic philosophy if it's different than that but it seems like it's similar but I don't understand what you mean by material oh. so um what is the yoga philosophy I'm going to ask that way okay I mean it's a holistic approach if you think about nesting dolls Russian nesting dolls there's five layers of our being. Mm -hmm. There's the physical layer, the gross layer, the outside layer, our energy layer, um, our mental emotional state, our intellect. And maybe that's what you mean by the material, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what we think about it and our spiritual connection so the five lay there's five layers i just four of so, them lay over pretty okay pretty so cool. yours were physical mental um, energetic and, no oh, energetic. physical energetic so emotional mental is one mental emotional emotional mental is one right intellect uh, or intuition and spiritual two. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do, because you want, this exercise is for you, so it should customize mm -hmm. to you. Okay. So you don't really have to fit in the confines of okay. any other structure. Okay. Um, physical, I think sounds like physical. Emotional right. and mental lineup. Energetic, is that where you were saying, is that material? I was trying to understand what material is. And so the energy is your breath body, right? I mean, it's like you, are you fatigued? Are you energized? Are you, you know, does this excite you to okay. do? Okay, well, material for me are physical things that you, that you can achieve or do. So like material, world traveler to me is you need to be able to have money to be able to go do okay. that. That's material. Okay, um, I, I have um, a couple. Or <laughs> successful, like, you know. Successful. That's what I'm asking, what it means yeah. in this context. Okay. So the other I thing say, I think of... Oh. I would say for Alex, that's what material means. Right. Carrie, for you, you have a very different uh, perspective on the world. So I think putting in, if that, if that means the energetic self, put that in as your heading. It's a more applicable heading for you. Mm-hmm. Leslie, what's your question? Let's see if we can customize this to you. Um, I don't really know like spiritual, what that, that is 
you know. Um, Maybe it doesn't matter to you. Yeah, I'm I mean, nothing in spiritual. What? Zip. <laughs> so what we're trying to do. I mean, like the only thing I have in spiritual is, you know, generous. I don't know. Generosity of Perfect. spirit kind of seems like that. But right. all of mine are, are <laughs> all of mine are lining up in the mental and emotional categories because mm -hmm. I'm yeah. color coding all my cells. Like, right. oh, OK. Can you see my Excel spreadsheet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what I did also. Um, and really, this is the whole guided exercise. It's this is giving you it's a it's a guide, not a rule. So we want to customize it to what you need. And so and we're that's the whole idea. Customize it to the way that it works for you. And if, if this is not like the SAT test, it's not, you know, the driver's exam, you either get it right or get it wrong. It's we're customizing this to figure out what your green lights and your red flags are. So Terry is very based in this philosophy that is deep rooted. And that's the right way to structure this. So having it be physical, emotional, spiritual, energetic, intellectual, or intuition, intuitive, or spiritual, I missed a word in there. That's the right way to categorize it. And if I were, you know, working one-on-one, -on -one, I would have designed it specifically for Terry. For, <laughs> I got an accent on that one from the dog. For Alex, you know, I love the way that you defined material for you based on um, success, worldviews, travel, accomplishments, and achievements. That is perfect for you. So, Leslie, the whole idea here is to figure out what is super relevant to you. And it's by going through the exercise, it gives you an opportunity to have it reflected back to you rather than, you know, when you and I are working together and then you just go, okay, just tell me. And then I do exactly what I'm giving you an opportunity to reflect for yourself here. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. We about ready to keep going? Okay. All right. Now that you've got a list of five people who you've had significant relationships with, or you have now, whichever way you go is fine. Um, oh, I see what the problem is. I'm just trying to pull up a, my notes here. The, um, you've got the five people you have, each of them have five positive traits, right? They also have five traits that were negative traits. This could have been, you know, when you think about it, these, it could have been the reason that the relationship, um, broke up. This could have been a deal breaker or a reason that you broke up with them or the relationship has distanced. Um, now we've inverted those liabilities to assets. And what's interesting is to start to see repeated patterns. And like we were, I was mentioning to Lisa, it gives you proof what, that these traits exist. Because if you're looking for somebody and you're like, oh, that doesn't exist anywhere. Here's way to demonstrate that, yes, it does. Not only does it exist but it also exists in what you attract. So now you should be able to start to see, as Leslie was pointing out, that there's a weighting of where you focus 
what you find attractive. So for Leslie, it was intellectual, mental, and emotional. Like um, my previous relationship, not with Lou, before him, he was, he was an avoidant attachment. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned that's not what I want. And, and, and with Lou, we had an emotional connection, but there was no intimacy because I, I couldn't do it. So I need to combine both. Right. Do you know what's your attachment style? Um, probably insecure. Insecure, secure. Right. So the most ideal way to, and we can do this at another session or something, is to figure out, we can talk about attachment styles. and the But the best way to connect with someone and to secure an insecure attachment style is to be with someone who has a secure attachment style. Exactly, right. Because then you can trust them. And over time, you're like, the securities kind of just become less and less prevalent. Because these are things that are that come up when we're little, um, when our you know a parent leaves the room and you and the kids they're all alone and they're playing with their right. toys. Right. Do they stop what they're doing and they're looking for the person, the parent or guardian or the whomever who's going to care for them, and they freak out, or do they right. just decide they can take care of themselves? And then when they come back, what is the response to that? So right. that's how the attachment styles are determined, high level. I know that. Um, and if you're interested, I can send you a, a link to something to figure out what your attachment style is. <coughs> um, but, okay. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd like to look at that again as well. Okay. See if it's send that out to all of us. I will. Um, style. What, what that to everyone like with Lou he attached to me very quickly well that is a that is you know a sign of who he is and what he wants in his life yeah that could be insecure too right because and then if he was pushing you away which he didn't um that would show a different aspect of the attachment style so for somebody who is attaching very quickly having somebody having them matching them with someone who's got a secure attachment style because that person's going to be slow and steady, whether they stay in that mode of being strongly attached or they pull back every time you get close, somebody pulls away. Right. right. Um, so a secure attacher is going to be like, okay, go figure that out. I'm right here waiting. Um, but if you're matching up opposing attachment styles, then they feed into one another and it gets exciting and it gets distressing. So you're putting yourself on a roller coaster ride. Um, okay, so one of the things is to identify repeated patterns. You may wanna take a moment and when you're looking at these adjectives now, or these core values or whatever that, you know, descriptions that you've put in here, these traits, um, take a moment and pick your top five of these. Top five positive traits? Or just organize them, which are the most important to you and which are the least. I feel like I want to do this over with different people. I need to do it with, there's a very big difference between impactful people and, and people I naturally have a relationship with or people I naturally have around me. Okay. What uh, are we doing here? Picking our top five? Well, just what? itemizing what's most important to you and what's of those, what are the most important and what the least. You know, it could, what we're doing is looking for patterns. When you say most important, is it like the, 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 the actual trait or is it what the category of that? So like I have, like if I look at my thing and I've color coded it on my little Excel spreadsheet 
And unfortunately, I did something bad, but <laughs> I have I have all the mental stuff is, is labeled as bad and they're all red boxes. So now I'm having some really weird, like I want to recolor it. Um, Great but color. I've got and green is green is emotional. So I have like red and green and like my whole thing is like red and green. You know? Christmas. So I'm like Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. Okay. So <laughs> what I and they're, and they're good and bad things in there, you know. Right. I mean, right. there's there's you know, not flexible, shuts off you know, but thoughtful, loving, imaginative, confidence, acceptance, sees shades of gray, calmness, like all of that. Those are like all emotional. Okay. Components. So in the mental category that you've got, um, pick, pick the top five in the men, in, that are important traits to you and let's put them in a green <laughs> or I guess you were saying mental and just yeah I just have to change the color I'll be right back I'll right. be right back I gotta change my colors <laughs> I mean because I have positive and negative things in there you know right, and it's right. like I don't Here's necessarily want the the negative if you thing. were going to itemize all of these from the most important to the least, then the top five or 10 are going to be the, the green lights. Those are the things you're going to look for when you're having conversations. We were talking about asking questions or how do we figure out if somebody is the right match for us? I mean, we can ask, what did you do today? We can ask, who's your favorite team you support? Or we can start to engage in conversation and see, I mean, I was kind of interested in seeing mine. I'll give you the traits that I tend to need the most in long-term enduring relationships came out as this, intelligence, wise leader, confident communicator, capable, sociable, adventurous, enjoys the journey, accountable, reliable, trustworthy, consistent, steadfast, and compassionate, accepting, patient, open to others, considerate. That's not five. That's like, you've got like four in each room. Oh, did I break the rules? Bring me to court, attorney. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for me to do five also. I got one, two, three, four, five. So six, what I'm seven, saying eight. is- I have nine. Organize yeah. the things that are most important to you. They're all important. Those are the green lights. The ones that <coughs> showed up repeatedly in these patterns, like in the primary negative things you enjoyed the least, those are probably the deal breakers. I really didn't see them coming, but I know you guys know me pretty well. And you would probably agree that deal breakers for me are people who are gossipy, rigid, judgmental, and limited. No wonder you don't like me. <laughs> what? what was that? She says, no wonder you don't like me. But I actually do like you. You must not be following into these categories. Judgmental, I'm very rigid. She's like, I'm very rigid. I'm very rigid. I find you to actually um, be graceful and flexible in your time when you are ready. Remember how we talked about getting you a cat and you got a cat and then the cat was a reflection of who you are and the cat was hiding under the table on a chair and when the cat and you created a safe space for the cat and then the cat started to come to you and now the cat curls up on you and falls asleep on you. I see you a lot like this cat. So would I find that cat to be rigid? No, I'd find the cat to be cautious. Right. Oh, yeah. And I would find the cat to be one who would determine character of who they wanted to come close to, not just, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come sit in everybody's lap. So discerning. 
Um, that I mean, <laughs> look at Terry's sweet face. I actually don't find you rigid. Um, I would find you discerning and cautious. That's true. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I think intelligent is one of my top ones. That is no surprise to anyone. <laughs> and also um, creativity in whichever way it comes out. Right. So I think I could have written these words for you guys in five seconds. However, it's often more important that you come to these conclusions on your own. So let's hear what your green lights are and your red lights. Lisa, do you want to give us your list? Uh, my green lights are intelligence, creativity, honesty, generous, compassionate, confident. These are more than five. <laughs> um, <laughs> I put mine on five <laughs> categories, but I shoved them all together. So uh, <laughs> acceptance, uh, sociable, and patience. The negative ones would be um, rigid. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The animals um, are very vocal in this session. Um, um, likes animals, that's one of my positive ones. <laughs> okay. um, 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 overbearing. Oh, these are these the green lights or red flags? Red flags. Okay, red flags. I just wanted to make sure. Um, it's like my mother overbearing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I spoke to this guy yesterday and he wouldn't stop talking a mile a minute. So I finally says, wait a minute, I'd like to say something. <laughs> I finally said that. And then, um, then I a few minutes later I said I have to go, I have to go wherever. And he said I know I talk too much, and we say goodbye. So let's talk about that for a second. I think you and I talked about it, but oftentimes when you're first engaging with someone, especially initially, it could go on. There's an anxiety of being judged, and the way that we overcome that anxiety depends on our life life experience of what worked in the past and so oftentimes and I hear this often is that the person will talk and 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 talk and, talk, and what they're doing is they're showing you the material they're showing you what was on the very uh, the physical is that what you were saying Terry on the external because they want to be perceived as accomplished. And um, remember earlier I was saying, you don't necessarily need to have the perfect body and be the richest person and have the greatest accolades to actually be in a healthy, loving relationship. However, when we, and we are being judged, I mean, we can't, our minds can't help but making judgments. They no, don't need to be judgy and judgmental, but we are making assessments. So somebody who's nonstop talking is actually showing that they want you to like them, but they're putting up these superficial physical things. And then they go, Ugh. it's like throwing the resume at you or look, I have a fancy car. I can do this and 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 this. And, this. and <coughs> it's, overbearing and overwhelming. Yes, I, I, I said, no, get, a, you know, right. get away. From me. So this <laughs> is like, if somebody is putting too much in their online profile, it's very similar. You wanted, he's demonstrating that he has a life and that he could be interesting. What he's forgetting is he's creating a situation where you are the audience and he's giving a dissertation. Right. Where, I don't remember what he said, it was only yesterday. <laughs> And what you're looking for is someone to co-create a relationship. Yeah, yeah. So to, like you were saying, like, let me be part of it. What you can do is reflect to him that I say meet him where he's at. 
reflect to him how you admire some, you know, pick one thing he's talking about, take a breath and say, I'd like to, to, you know, say how amazing that is so that he can just take a pause and get his brain from, you know, take a breath and move the energy into his brain to his prefrontal cortex where he can take a breath and go, I can be in the moment and I'm not here dancing away to try and impress this person, but that we can actually be together. Another thing you can do, so to compliment whatever it is he's talking about that's proving who he is, and then say, you know what? I have a similar life experience and blah, 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 blah. So you're- In a word in edgewise, it was impossible. <laughs> I, so, I, I, I have hearing aids and I have an app on the phone. So the phone can be, you know, down on my desk and I can still talk. And I was just, you know- <laughs> He lost you. Oh, that yeah, I said, I said, okay, I'm enough for ready, you know. Um, I, finally had it. I finally had it. Right. The other thing you can do when you're in a really in, you know, a situation where you can see them is take a deep sigh, like, oh, oh. that totally puts them like, oh, they're so amazed with what I'm doing and who I am. And then you can engage in. But he was too nervous to even let you. But yeah. somehow what we want to do is change the dynamic from, you know dissertation and audience member to let's have a conversation or I'd like to know more about this that you said so that you can show some intrigue or interest that listening skills, but he wasn't giving you a chance. No. no. Okay. That, that advice has actually been helping me with my relationship with David who talks continually. Yay. It's <laughs> helping. I, was I have I have lots of good words on my list and definitely but you know from listening to you guys talk I'm like oh those are yeah those are good to put on the list and no this you know I mean because because it's really hard like I think who was it Lisa you said I think I have to reevaluate who I have on my list because you know I'm not I'm not getting the right words and, and I think I would agree with that, you know, because yeah. um, like I didn't, I didn't put intelligent on, on my thing at all, which is a very important thing to me. Intelligence is interesting. And I'm like, okay, you know, like I wasn't, I don't know. I just, that didn't get on the list, even though I'm like, oh yeah, she's, she's intelligent, but I, you know, I, I guess my dog is intelligent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my dog did give me one thing that I was like, oh, I'm not sure I really like this. Like the, the dichotomy of can't take care of yourself and self-sufficient, which Ooh. then I also saw like with Ooh. one of my, a, a negative thing with my sister is like lack of self-care and my daughter sometimes has lack of self-care. Yeah. So like, like those are like, oh, okay. But these are my, go my goals are flexibility and compromise, um, strong sense of self, introspective, positive self-talk, intelligent, <laughs> loving companion, sociable, calm, confident, and accepting, fun-loving, and adventurous. And my I, deal breakers that's are a all the- green light list. Hang on. Let's just pause for a second. That is a really good green light list for you, Leslie. When, it, when you're ready to switch things up on your profile, you can make sure those words are in there. And when you're having, when you're chatting with people, ask questions to learn about those green lights. Okay. All right. Now let's so hear here, your red My flag. deal breakers, my anxiety, ju being judgy, rigid, black and white thinking, and overbearing. Whoever said overbearing, I'm like, oh yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, <coughs> And, and fear, fearful, I guess that's the other thing. I mean, not necessarily yeah. a deal breaker, but it's like, I, I have enough fear for everybody in the world. And mm -hmm. so I think I need somebody to balance that. Who's not necessarily going to be go jump off, you know, a cliff, but is also going to be like, okay, the, the, everything doesn't have to be that scary. You know what I mean? I think that's a very good thing to put on your list also. And the way that you tempered it is appropriate because you're not looking for someone who's fearless. No. However, you're looking for someone who 
understands that fear is an emotion that's healthy and it's a discerning indicator to pay attention and understanding how to use fear is a brilliant GPS uh, landmark. I mean, it's the thing that says, don't get too close to the edge of the cliff. You could fall. That would be scary. Don't do that. So having fear and then understanding the ability to make the best choice given the options and doing it anyway, that's the courage that you're looking for. So somebody who's got the courage to do something or be accountable and responsible, I think that's, I think that's very key for you. And also that they will take responsibility for the outcome yeah. so that they're not pushing it all on you. Right. Um, that, that also came up a lot is responsibility and, and accountability. Um, but like some of these, like, how do you get hey, your, at, your, your sound went out? How do you get like the questions to find these things out about people? Like, oh, Alex would okay, like Okay, Alex. <laughs> Alex, I call I'll take Alex for a hundred dollars. So that that's one of the things that I struggle with too. So I only have one good example, and that's what I was gonna say next week if we can work on actually taking this into questions. Mm -hmm. But one of the ones like like my non-negotiables are lying, drinking to the point that it will negatively impact me and the kids, depression or self-deprecation self-absorbed and not consider what's in my best interest and lacking passion slash not self-inspired, which means lack ambition, drive or unsuccessful. Right. So here's a question. So it's on the negative one, but like lying is number one on my list. So um, a positive question out of that is, what are you willing to make a white liar lie for? Mm. So you like, you, you take, the concept of what you don't like and you ask it in a different way. So another example of that Michelle and I were working on was take something that's going on in the media locally and say, where was where there was a lie and then ask what you would do in that situation. So like we were talking about this, like, you know, when all this stuff was going on with Trump and how Trump would lie about X or Y or Z and like, you know, using like so is that something you think is okay to lie about? Or is that something that you think it's not okay to lie about? You know, those kind of like topics, like something in general that kind of like fishes out what the person actually thinks about lying or not. But you have to have an understanding of what really pisses you off and what, you know, for me, honesty and trustworthy are number one in terms of my number one positive trait and lying is my non-negotiable. So it's my number one non-negotiable. So for me, I need to build a series of questions around those two things that kind of give me what their moral value is or the way they react yeah, to things. Where their, what's the word, your high ground, where the moral high ground is. And to that point, figuring out, you know, what would you be willing to make a white lie for? Is it, is it, when would, you, when, in what, in what circumstances would you be willing to make a white lie? Right. If someone um, they hurt. You can ask, you know, we were just asking at the beginning of this call, what was the most recent gift you gave? Um, you could, I mean, this is so important to you. You can ask, what was something that you were willing to lie for recently? I mean, literally, I don't even know. I'm a big truth teller. So that would be hard for me. I don't yeah. lie. I don't lie at all. I don't think I do either. I, I, that would be immoral, wicked. I just don't do it. Right. So, the, but the question really is, how do you figure it out of, you know, at very early on, what, are, I mean, this is so important to Alex. And there's the whole inquiry of you come to a fork in the road, you can ask one question, one person is, I think this is gonna to come to our answer, Alex. One person um, at the 
one direction of the road when you're trying to get to a castle or something always is a truth teller and the other one is always a liar. And I think the answer to this is you ask the liar or you ask one of them with the other person. It's a double negative story. I have to figure right. this. I shouldn't have brought it up here. Uh, what would the other person tell me what the answer would be? Yeah, what would the other person say? Because then you would end up, the liar would say, the truth teller would, he would have to lie. Right. That's how it goes. The liar would say that other person, the truth teller would, he would give the lie of it. And the truth teller would say that the liar was lying. So you'd end up doing the opposite of what you were told that it's a math question, really. Um, <laughs> I don't get it. That's all right. Double That's okay. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a double negative. It was a puzzle that somebody gave to me when I was a kid. Um, but to do, so if we come up with a double negative, we're not trying to trick people. We're trying to figure out what would push you over the edge so that you can discover someone who would actually be willing to have the hard card. Here's the other. Okay. Here's the negative opposite side. Alex, what you're looking for is someone who's willing to have really difficult conversations with you. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, they're, they're, no, I'm really looking for someone that's just honest. Like, right. You tell me something about your background. You tell me the truth. Not that I'm a rocket scientist and I earned, I mean, right. the moon and back, right? I'm right. not, so I'm not looking for. Stuff. Right. But what I'm saying is, Someone who's willing to have the hard conversations is somebody who's going to tell you the truth. They're I disagree with that statement. I think I, they're much more likely to tell you the truth if they will really get into the deep underbelly of things and say what's hard for them to share. I think we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about dating somebody that's a sociopathic liar that lies about everything and anything versus, so what color socks are you wearing? Blue, he's got on gray socks. There's no rhyme or reason for that kind of lying. And I dated somebody like that. So it's not that I didn't have deep, intimate conversations about all, everything in their life. It just, I mean, childhood stories about how they went and saw their, their horse and how they did all these different things with their horse. And when you spoke to their mother, it was their neighbor's horse. It wasn't their horse. So they changed the stories to make them yeah. sound better for them. Exactly. Or whatever purpose drove that conversation. And they, and discovering that they didn't just do it with me. They did it with everyone. I mean, I well, figured that, that out also. Yeah, persona. Right. Um, okay. So what we it wanted. It's hard to find out. That would be hard to find out, you know, like without, this. yeah, you know, I you mean, you'd have to, to meet them and, and, and see that, oh, you're wearing blue well, socks, knows, you said you were wearing gray. This, right. So, yeah, I dated the guy for four years. So yeah. don't, don't, no. don't think. <laughs> no, no, I, I know that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just yeah. saying that. How do you, like, I'm just wondering for my own self, like, how can you determine somebody who is lying when you're just texting or talking on the phone if they are a sociopath and an expert liar then it's like how, how do you know that they're even telling you the truth when you when they say what's what's some little white what's a white something that you would tell a white lie about so you know? this goes to establishing the relationship early on to be very forthcoming and honest so when any of you say, oh, it, I didn't want to impose on them by asking to have them show me their credentials, uh, proving that they are who they say they are, I'm going to be like, this is where you do it right here. And I make fun of it going, if they're not willing to do that, then later down the line, they're not going to go get the toilet paper for you when you're sitting in the bathroom alone without anybody to hand you the toilet paper and you're out with, you're out of toilet paper. But it's really much more important than that because it's somebody who's willing to show that they are vulnerable, that they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to posture because the people who are posturing all the time, it's too hard to hold that up. 
You want to have somebody who can, who doesn't have any problem showing you who they truly are. None of you here would have a worry about showing someone who you truly are because you are truly amazing as you are. Absolutely incredible. When we're finding people who are too good to be true, it could be because that's not who they truly are. And if they aren't forthcoming soon, then that is a telltale. I'm on uh, online with my relationship group, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of therapy and my son is arriving. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so Liesl, you, you might need to leave. Give us your green lights and your red flags. I don't have any, I, I never got that far because I um, realized that there's a very big difference between impactful relationship and people I naturally have around me. Okay. Relationship, for instance, includes both of my sons. Yeah. And, and that's different than a friendship. That's different than the warmth and charm of an intimate relationship. So I didn't, I didn't, I, I need to redo this. And I have written down the categories and the qualifications and how to redo it. Okay. All I can say is stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Okay, so don't worry. If you wanna do it on your own, fine. If not, you and I can do it together. We have time on the calendar. Okay, yes, yes. So Come make on. it stress-free and we'll work on it together. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. So the funniest thing is like, somebody did their dog and all of a sudden I like ran down the characteristics of Jack's. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that would be good for me and a man. <laughs> I'm like, I totally agree. Companionship, generous, affectionate, soft, Fun. you know, the only yeah, things I mean, that are not good is sometimes she's smelly, sometimes she's too loud and she can't <laughs> take care of herself. So I would like somebody who's self-sufficient and quiet. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And Jax is even intelligent because he's a shepherd. <laughs> yes, and my dog is very intelligent too. And she's deaf. Right. Maybe that's a good thing. You can't hear me talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I was doing that with Lisa. We were talking about her cat. Her cat is a great reflection of traits that she wanted to bring in, but it took a little work to get there. And we've had to go through a couple of changes in iterations and relationship challenges. So we navigated those to the point where the two of you are very happy together now. Um, Leslie, I'm gonna take the example of your admin. You had some challenges with an admin. So we found out what the most important things were. And I literally cleared the challenges that you might have in the future in the behavioral interview. I was saying things like, uh, she had said something in the interview about where she takes initiative and she's a leader and she's a go-getter. And I quickly said, okay, it's very important for you to realize who the alpha is here because mm -hmm. I didn't want her to try and alpha you. So mm -hmm. we talked about that in the interview at the very beginning of the relationship. This is going to be how it is in this relationship. You may bring up all of your ideas and experience, and that's going to add value to the interaction between employer and employee. At the same time, you need to know during the interview that Leslie is the employer. She's the alpha. She has the final say. And because she had said a couple of things that suggested that she overstepped in previous situations maybe that was true maybe that was not true but I cleared that straight up so she knows who you are and where you and she stand together so that's the goal of when you're setting the relationship what do you, what your expectations are Alex you can set up front you can say honesty is one of my greatest values lying is a trigger let me just put it out there we can have the greatest relationship in the world. If I discover that you have not been completely honest with me, it's over. And I, I mean, I, there was a fellow in my youth who proposed to me and in the proposal, he was asking me, and this is my value system, not the same as everyone else's. 
He said, what if you discovered I had an affair? This Ooh. when he was asking me to marry him in the very same breath. Oy, oy, oy. And so I said, if you, you know, I would, I was open to marrying this man. And I said, but if I found out that you were having an affair, I would take the children and I would take everything and you would never see us again. It'd be over. And he's like, I'm <laughs> like, wow. He was making it very clear. Don't you think he did me a favor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was a little heartbroken, but at the same time, thank you for being super honest up front. He was telling you I might have an affair. Yeah, probably. Because he probably had, because he probably did in the past. I, I can't speak to that, but he was saying that this was something that was going to be important to him and that was going to determine success or failure and I had my so we were not compatible we were compatible up until that moment done yeah trust trust is gone in that situation well it's just I mean there are plenty of relationships where those kinds of things work that wasn't where the first relationship that I was planning on getting into no. I I think I'm going to change the subject here, go back to what Alex was saying, that I think it would be very helpful for me, at least, to, to work with some of these things and turn our lists into good questions mm -hmm. to ask. Because I, I mean, like, I find myself doing a lot of texting with people and I do, you know, I, I, I get into that very basic, like stuff that is just the what are you doing today? You know, um, instead of, you know, tell me about yourself, you know, like, I mean, one of my things that I think that I've got as a, a trait that I, that I want more of is, you know, kind of somebody who is introspective and who has positive self-talk because I don't want to be around somebody who's got, who's negative self-talk all the time. Right. And I realize, you know, you talk about this impactful relationship my ex-husband has all the things that I don't want in a relationship, right? Except companionship. That's like the only positive thing, everything else like that I have for him. I mean, there were some good things about being accountable and, and responsible, but man, like all of my deal breakers are all on his side, rigid, anxious, black and white thinker, judgmental, fearful, you know, like and then I, I sit there and I go, okay, well, how, how do I, how do you find out about, how do you, how do you get to that? Like, how do you, how do you learn? Just, First thing. I'm no good at asking the questions. You're so good at asking questions. Oh my God. Not so, on the, okay, fine. Wait, wait, maybe don't you ask questions for a living? Wait a second. <laughs> questions for a living, but I am looking for specific facts. Right. Okay. And I can't figure out what is a fact that, you know, like would would support the concept that you're introspective. <laughs> you well, go to therapy, you know, I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, ask that's that a, yeah. Question. yeah I've asked that question so, a bit of therapy, like if someone's divorced or a widow, I asked Lou that. And what? I mean, I think that you ask Terry that question. <laughs> what if she's ever been to therapy no i don't oh, therapy is I not in, introspection i mean you can ask somebody what their you know i mean what their practices are just you know i would of, ask about you know your if you're asked if you're starting with how was your day they're gonna say oh i was in a meeting what did you think about that or what did you you know or i worked really hard or I don't know, whatever they're going to say. I was in traffic. What did right, you, how'd you feel about that? Right? Yeah. I want to know what they think and feel about that. Because if they're literally introspective, we'll say, oh my God, I was on a call with someone today and they brought up a memory. I haven't thought of this memory in so long, but it was of my son when he was about three years old at best, he was wearing at best a diaper. And he was in my mother's amazing, gorgeous bed that has like 
bazillion cotton, blah, blah, blah. It's so count cotton and this incredible down comforter and everything is white and there's down pillows propping him up. And he's like got a white porcelain bowl that was my grandmother's and he's eating a pear and the juice is dripping down his chin and his chest while he's watching cartoons. I'm like, there's a moment. Oh my God. <laughs> so somebody who is introspective can actually use adjectives and bring you to a moment that they've had in their life. Do you agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. I've, I've asked a question like, how did you use your time during the pandemic? That, that says, tells a lot about the person. Do you consume? I that? mastered every single show on Netflix. Right. So as I was saying, did you consume content or did you create it? During the pandemic, people were asking me, oh, are you watching Tiger whatever? Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm okay. writing a book. I'm building two programs. I've never been busier. I yeah. watched Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King. <laughs> so I wasn't consuming content. I was creating it. Yeah, me too. I was second person. <laughs> It's how do you, you know, when do you go into action? What do you do in an emergency? How do you handle an emergency? I think might be an interesting question. Um, because I want someone who can make quick decisions. I'm very good in an emergency situation. I will literally do whatever you need. And then afterwards go. <laughs> But See, and that's not me. I mean, me in emergency, I'd be like, mm -hmm. Who's right. in charge? I will save your life. I will, whatever the wound, I will make sure everyone's okay. I will deploy everything as it should be. And then later I'll be like, how did I do that? And I'll pack the car. I'm good at that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I need to step away for just a minute. All right. I, I can uh, handle emergencies too. Right. So, and then if I'm going to get upset afterwards, I get upset once the emergency is handled, but not during. Right. So that might be an interesting the question. Heroes. That's amazing. That really is <laughs> very amazing. Oh yeah. I've saved people's lives. I can't even count the times. Yeah, Whether I take action. I take action. I, and I take I, action. I get like, I, I have a delayed reaction. Oh, no, I take action. If I see someone choking from across the restaurant, I make sure it's solved. And then later I'm like, uh, I just saved a person's life. Are you choking? Are you choking? Are you, are you choking? <laughs> that's me. Are you choking? So maybe that's a good question for you. How do you handle emergency situations? I mean, it's probably not the first question because it suggests that you have a lot of emergency situations. <laughs> or give that's me funny. <laughs> but you know when was a time that you ha handled guess, a situation that was challenging I guess the key for me is you know there's I have not had good luck on the match <laughs> thing you know I've been out to, to with with people and stuff like that but I I'm at the point where I'm sort of nervous about it so I'm like you know kind of withdrawing and just I just want to like text people and see if anything comes of it so I've been texting this guy for frick, almost a month. It seems like, you know, Sheep Shafe. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> and I don't like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, should we have a phone call? Like, it's just, it's the weirdest thing. And I feel like it feels like, oh yeah, we could go have coffee or something like that. You know, cause we've just had this sort of daily back and forth, but like, we've never talked on the phone. It's just, I don't know. It's just weird. Like, it's just weird. They can and now a, it's a spammer they, they like to text a lot and you, you don't know who's behind it. Um, I think this guy's a real person. No, this guy's a real person. He is a real right. person. And, um, and I think he would want to talk. The, the, the problem is that like, he asked me, he asked me out very quickly, but it turned out that I didn't, I didn't do the best response. I said, Oh, I'm busy. And not, I didn't say I'm busy that day. How about this day? So I never followed up with him on that. And then um, 
And there was something else that happened. It was like, I called him by accident on my Google phone and couldn't figure out how I'm like, oh shit, I called him. I didn't mean to call him. I meant to text, send him a text message. So and I hung up on him. Let me ask you this. What would you like to have happen? Have coffee with him. I think I want to meet him. And I, and I, and I probably will ask him because I did last week, I did say to him, Hey, you know, we've been messaging each other, you know, daily. I'd like to learn more about you. Would you share uh, ch- your fi- favorite childhood memory or something like that? You know, and, and we did That's not get any questions. That's a really sweet one. Yes, and it is I very guess. compelling. Remember we yeah. did the role exercise of who did you used to be, who you are now and who you're stepping into. That's you're asking about what are the things that were meaningful to him when he was little? That's a good question. So um, are you willing to give up the daily connection to escalate the relationship? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then that's an indicator that it's time to say, you know, you would ask me out once before. You think you're brave enough to do that again? Because I know you want him to ask you. Yeah, you do know that, don't you? (laughs) Terry's laughing at me. No, I know that's a really fun way to get what you need. You know, it's another way of saying, I'd really appreciate it. (laughs) It would would please me. It would please me. Right. It would please me. And I I believe me. I got to start somewhere. Then we can get into the nuances. (laughs) Funny about it would please me. When I was in law school, the way that you're supposed to address the court is, may it please the court, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, and so like, whenever I sit here, it would please me. I'm like, oh, I'm standing at the podium in the mock, in the mock court trial, you know, <laughs> may it please the court, you know, Leslie Gamil appearing on behalf of the petitioner, Tommy, whoever, <laughs> you know. All right. Whose list have we not yet heard? Terry. Terry's list. Terry. My Terry. list, but it's, um, you don't you know, have I've, make excuses for your list. No, I'm not making excuses for okay. the list. I just, I find it really interesting. I'm, I mean, what I came up for positive is trust, healthy, active, lifelong learner, adventurous, supportive, kind, um, courageous, a negative. I mean, the first thing was abusive, lying, condescending, overbearing, intimidating, narcissistic, uh, selfish, Self, I mean, then you know, lacking ambition. I want to go back and and do this with the three major male relationships in my life. Not, I mean, everybody I chose, four out of the five people that I chose are no longer with us. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, and I'd like to go back and do the three major, you know, three long term male relationships I had, and my two dogs. You know, so I'm going to go back and redo it with those five, with those five. Right. Well, you, you know, I mean, I'm, I look at it and I go, okay, well, those, th- those were the most telling things on my list. Like my ex-husband and my dog. Yeah. What the hell? That's why I want to go back and try No, it. that's very yeah. good because just as we were saying, it's the relationships that are, that you attract. So the traits that you attract. So now we know what the deal breakers are. So you're not going to attract that again, because that's the whole idea. Be aware of them so that you can go, this is a no, I'm establishing a boundary. I mean, Alex can just be like very, very clear. I can't deal with liars. It's a no. It's a hard no for me. Mm -hmm. So when that conversation comes up, there's going to be, you know, a natural organic thing where it's like, oh my God, I went on a date with this guy and he was trying to dine and dash. And he, and he's like, it's the uh, restaurant's problem that they didn't give us the bill. And I'm like, have you been to a restaurant before? The relationship is that you go in and they create a wonderful experience for you and they deliver you food. And then in return, you give them currency 
and you tip the person who served you. And he was like, no, it's their fault because they didn't give us the bill. And I'm like, oh. and I, I was just like, so this was a hard no for me because that was very telling. He was going, he actually had told a story where he did something similar. Oh no, he sold somebody else out for doing something similar. So his his story and his behavior were so out of alignment. I can't connect with that. That guy's a, a hard no for me. Um, but knowing that your green light list and your red flag list and what they are, you're going to start to identify these much more quickly now because they're very much at the forefront. Um, and your dog is a really good one or your pet, just like I used Liesl as an example, because the pets are going to reflect the personality in front of them. I mean, if Pixel had, a, you know, if we were always anxious around her, this would not be the dog that you get. But she rocks. So we must be addressing her with some decency. <laughs> How how would I ask? Because I'm I'm very strong. So how would I ask if I can handle a woman that's independent? Okay, so strong and independent are sometimes misunderstood uh, or misinterpreted. Um, so what do you really mean? I have my own mind and opinions, you know. I, I'm, I'm not easily swayed. And that's what we're starting to talk about. Um, so if you say I'm strong and I'm independent, those could be misinterpreted. But if you're saying things like, um, I, have, I have an opinion, my opinion matters to me, that's different. And well, I, uh, I hold strong to my opinion. Also be considered like a strong sense of self. You know, a strong sense of self. That's good. I mean, because that's, that really is like your opinion, your thoughts and your opinions, and you're not going to be wavering. And because I, I, I think I have the same, I have similar, you know, like I look at myself, Oh, I'm a strong, independent woman. And it's like, what is exactly does that mean? Right. You know, like I'm Mm self-sufficient, you know, is that, is, is that the same as, as strong? Like maybe strong is, is interpreted as not emotional or not sensitive. Mm-hmm. And I'm not that. I'm very right. sensitive. Right. You know? It um, could be that you're capable. Mm-hmm. Independent might, might imply that you don't need anyone else. Okay. You're actually looking to invite in a partnership. Right. So independent may not be the right word that you want to put out there because it could be repellent to somebody well, like, so it, I mean, and, and then, and then similarly self-sufficient could have that same problem. Self-sufficient issue. or capable. Um, or those, I, think, I mean, those are softer. Those are definitely softer. Cause I, I, I like capable. You're capable. And Lisa, in your world, you have a value system that you adhere to, you have a political system that, or, you know, set of opinions and guidelines that you feel very strongly about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that you're, you know, strong, just saying I'm a strong woman. Yeah. What does that mean? Don't open right. the door for me or I'll punch you in the face. No. Right. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to change that my profile because I think I did say independent. I like I'm I I'm uh, I hold a strong sense of self capable of creating co-creating relationship mm-hmm. something like that. Yep. So yeah, so strong sense of self, you're capable, and you hold true to your values because that is more descriptive of what you really want. When yeah. I through this with other people, um, somebody was looking for, and Alex will know this one, she really wanted to be with someone tall. 
And so we talked about what is it about a tall person you're really looking for? And she mm-hmm. wanted someone to pick her up and carry her around. And <laughs> she said, I really want someone who can keep me safe. And we were like, that's what you're looking for. So she literally found someone who can keep her safe and give her this sense of safe. Um, and Alex, you're looking for someone who can keep you safe and being honest with you and having integrity will help to keep you safe. True. So if you're only talking about honesty and lying, you know, see what kind of integrity they have. See, you know, when they've been pushed to a challenge, how did they handle that situation? Because they'll start to tell you. Plus now you are looking specifically to sift through people based on that because it's one of your highest things. So let's ask those questions early on. All right. I, I spoke to this guy last week. He was six one, and I, I, I guess he didn't read my profile. So at the end of the conversation, I said, "By the way, I'm I'm four eleven, and he, he didn't like that. <laughs> but yeah, we had a nice conversation. So I don't know. Right. So um, I think it's interesting. These you get these really tall guys. I yeah. <laughs> Which. I mean, as long as you're both good with that, I just saw this really cute uh, vignette and it was this this young lady and she's like, I'm a tall queen and I married this short king. And she's like, and this is the season to have pictures taken. So I'm going to show you tall queens how to take a picture with your short king. And (laughs) her husband is like, huh? Um, but totally playing along with this and definitely, you know, more than a head and a half taller. And she says, you know, and he's down here, you know, if you take a family photo like this, that's what you're going to get. But if you just, she goes, lean back and put one leg forward. And then they were like a little bit more evened out. And she says, that's how tall queen takes a picture with it, with her short king. It was super cute. And she's like, and I'm wearing heels. Cause I'm not going to be dressing for the holidays without heels on. And I mean, he's what, um, what they see in each other is the authenticity and the trueness and the difference in height doesn't make it, they can make fun and have fun with it and play with it. No problem. You go ahead, wife of height, keep wearing the heels, go, go, go. Um, And so the height difference between them was totally, I mean, she was playing with it completely. Yeah. Um, But that's not, it wasn't the most important thing. It wasn't their core values. I mean, their green light list was clearly strong together. Yeah. And height was not on the deal breaker list. Yeah. Usually my guys are, you know, five, seven, five, eight. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's more of an average height for guys these days, but who knows? I haven't figured that out. Um, all right. Who else did that's, we get everybody's that's, list? That's short in my book. <laughs> <laughs> did we get everybody's list? Yes, yes, I yes. Think so. I think you did. Yeah. Alex, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're going to call it a night. So the thing that you're doing on Thursday, what time hmm. is it? Three o'clock Pacific, you said? So um, let's close the art of relationshiping. And this is how you figure out your green lights and your red flags.